have so many, then you get a write up. I'm getting very forgetful. You might want to fix your hair. Or you on camera. She'll shave a little better. Or brush my teeth. Nice, dog. You don't get that close. Yeah. I'm a better suit. Yeah, uh, you look good. Should have polished up my little gloves. <laughs> you don't remember that about 10 people. Yeah, should have wore all your bling and, and all your and chains. Uh, and <laughs> and <laughs> you see some of them preachers, boy, I am not kidding. They look like Mr. T, you know. But. Yeah, I'm good to be from Lake Charles. Rocks on their hands. Oh, yeah. I will never forget Jimmy Swagger in his uh, early days. A lot of Before he had his fall and come back, he used to have that big old Rolex on that arm. That and, uh, this is back in the 80s, and some, some widow had given that to him. Oh, he was very, very rich and powerful, and then he had to fall. He's back, but he's very quiet. I got, I got an ex. It's not a Rolex. It's a time X. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, my brother, when he was in the reserves, he his only deployment was 15 months over Bahrain. And uh, he come back and he had like and this is, this is uh, platinum right here. This one he brought him for me and my sisters. Because he wasn't married, but he brought the brother in law's the husband's Rolexes, right? But they were not off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they were still nice watches. Yeah. But you could, he got some nice furniture. I have a table, carved table in the living room. Yeah, I've been there a few times. So. Yeah, after Patrick passed, I was his executor. And he. After my parents lived in the family home that we moved in in 1960, and, uh, and he died in 2014, but he had some nice furniture and rugs. Great big tree is a brother. Still here, but not part of the Okay. Failing, but it fell in the street. Where's Miss Nina? Hi, Miss Nina. Hey, you snuck in today. That's unusual. Oh, I usually. <laughs> well, everybody was talking, and so I thought I'd keep my mouth shut until everything calmed down, and then I would do it after that. I got a lot of editing to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot that. Um, well, you were under a virus. I know what. Until he actually started. I'm glad you realized that. <laughs> yeah. It'll record for two hours. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Got everybody here this morning. Glad to be here myself. Beautiful day outside today. It is. Low humidity. Got a nice little breeze blowing out there. Yes. Yeah. If you like that, I wouldn't mind. And I'll back you up. I still had it. Uh, hang my hammock in my backyard. I'll go out there and take me in that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, 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 uh. I'm a uh, 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 John and Foy, 24. Okay. John is a spirit in the that were was in the way. Was where was it? John Foy Tony. Yes. Yep. John is a spirit they that worship him, that's worship him, and the spirit and right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, Thank that, you. That, that, Alright. That, that verse how in my hand. Wow, wow, what that, that? That was what Pastor Dave was talking about last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young, yeah, yeah. And on the day, it was about the helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The post uh, out uh, oh, or something. That's true. He had his word in uh, us. Right. Amen. Yeah. Very good. Bushes out there, Shay. Anybody got it? Yeah. All right. Good idea. All right. Now. Okay, man. We need to pray for Jerry Falwell. You know, his daddy was a preacher, and mm -hmm. he took over. I don't know what's happened, 
but he resigned from church. He, oh, got, wow. into some he got into some fine. trouble. Jerry Farwell and I were born on the same day and we were the same age. It's the son who's and in he trouble. Yeah, he's, he's, he's indicted over a few things. And I'd, I'd like th uh, thanksgiving for the children that they found in the last two weeks. It's been all, finally it yeah. was all over the news. They were missing children, well, tra like sex that? trafficking, the uh, U.S. Marshals, what was it, 39 kids in Georgia yep. and 20-some up in Ohio oh, in wow. the, that they have rescued. And all this other stuff going on has overshadowed it and finally it was all over the news starting yesterday. Yep. What? I didn't see that. Yes. What, what, what did these children I got something in the mail to give to They somebody. found some in a trailer. What was it? The yeah, 39 were found in a trailer in Georgia. That. They, that's how they're, they're uh, transporting a lot of... Yeah, they were in a, a tractor trailer and they were being transported and it was girls and, and other boy, and boys of all ages up through you know little to that yeah. because all these kids disappear yeah, anyway there was a breakthrough in that case yeah. mm -hmm. and I was watching it this morning on you know Fox and CNN's finally showing it so. well, well uh, there, there was a thing going on about whenever kids came from another country to take them away from their parents. Is that is the are these these kids? No, no. I, no. Well, they taking the some kids. of them might be, yeah. but well, th these things uh, kids taking the kids away from the parents will be stopped. Too. Well, they were putting no, them in. No, it the, should not. No, because if I get the DUI and I have my kids, my kids are going to be taken from me. The same thing is they're going in, if they go in through the port of entry the way they're supposed to come in through, that doesn't happen. And then once it's cleared. Once they're cleared, they get returned to their parents. But a lot of people, they are. And the ones that aren't is because people saying, I pay you so, so and so to take my kid. Make this, oh, okay. give, them well, good, I, give them a good life. And okay. you're, you're going on there saying that um, my kid, this is my, this is my kid and all. And then they do some tests on it and they talk to the kid on there and they find out you're not the kid. And you may end up be doing what they were doing, getting them on trailers to send them away. Mm -hmm. So okay, well, I probably that's the only reason. Yeah, I thought that didn't do that much. Yeah, I, 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 that's only from my law enforcement side of the house that, that I get that information. Mm -hmm. you know, so a lot, a lot of the other new, yeah. a lot of news things on there. They're only turn around saying that they're being yanked, and they're not telling the full story or the tr true story yeah. behind it. And it's, not we had the bad hurricane this week. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, 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 and who's been in, in, in New Orleans? 16, yes. 16, hmm. 16, 16, and died. Hey, 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 and uh, who, who, who's in? And Brother Bill was saying that he has family down there, so be praying for Brother Bill's family down yeah. there. And Brother Ray, be praying for um, Brother Beagle. He lost his mother this week, so be praying for, yeah. for oh, wow. him. <clears throat> I mean, that family's just been going through a lot in the last couple of years. And yeah. they, they lost a daughter-in-law not long ago, a few yeah. weeks ago, didn't they? Yeah. They buried yeah. a daughter-in-law. Yeah. And now his mother passed the other day. Let's keep our uh, unsaved family and friends in prayer also. And, uh, and uh, we need a revival at this church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean a real Holy Ghost revival at this church. I uh I am driven here near that don don that month. Uh uh I need into a uh, uh, do, uh, uh, on YouTube until in not return. Yeah, oh. I saw the video. We saw the video in church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I want to eat it. I'm on it. Uh, on right. Friday morning. I'll be praying for Judy. She went, um, to see her family this weekend, so be praying that they have fun and that um, they have traveling mercies when they come back. That's okay. why she's not here today. Mm -hmm. 
I guess that's good news that she's not home sick. Yeah, uh, not home sick. But enjoying life, and time with family, that's a good thing. Always, always good to spend time with family, when you can anyway. Well, has anybody else got any prayer requests or praise reports they want to share this morning? I have some unspoken prayers. Okay. Unspoken myself. If there's uh, nobody else, then we'll go ahead and uh, take these to the Lord in prayer this morning and uh, get the uh, lesson started. Brother Tom, you'd be so kind, please, as to uh, lead us in prayer this morning. Our precious God and Father, we thank you today yes, Lord, thank you. for the privilege to be able to gather together in your house and to worship you a freedom that has yet had not been taken away from us. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the, the great price that you have paid for us at Calvary, for the salvation of our soul, for the healing of our bodies. And we thank you, Lord, because we know that you love us. Lord, if you didn't love us, you wouldn't have went through so much suffering. We are here, Lord, to make a way for us to be saved. We thank you, Lord, for that privilege of knowing Jesus as Savior and Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that touches our hearts and checks us, Lord, when we get in situations that we may have doubt about, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to always be sensitive to the move of the Spirit of God. Yes, Lord. Lord, and to what your Word says, because it's through and by your Word, Lord, we learn how we need to live and conduct ourselves. Lord, I realize in this country of ours there's a lot of problems. Lord, beginning in the White House, going down to the brand new baby that was born today. Lord, we ask in Jesus' holy name that you could help us as a nation to repent of our sins, turn from our wicked ways, seek your face, Lord, and depend upon you to come to our rescue. Know that you will, Lord, when we make a move to turn to you. Lord, but we need to show you that we are sincere in the way that we live and conduct ourselves. And if we want to see answers to prayer, God, we've got to believe that you are God that still answers prayer today. Yes. That you still heal, that you still set free, Lord. Cast out diseases, oh Lord. And the Spirit of God is still infilling people today as they seek God and, and desire to have the blessings of the Lord in their lives. We pray, Lord, that you would help us as we study the Word today to become alive and real, to learn, Lord, about our new abode when we leave this place and how wonderful it is, oh God. We thank you and praise you of what you have done for us and what you're going to do in the future. We pray, God, that you give us revival in our church, give us revival, Lord, in our city, in our state, and in the United States, Lord, we yes. pray in Jesus' holy name. And to God be glory for all that is accomplished. For us in the precious name of our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Brother Tom. We appreciate you. Uh, yes. Uh, you do a good job of it, you know. We can we can feel the the sincerity in your prayer. And that, uh, it's uh, well spoken. We appreciate you this morning. All righty then. <clears throat> We're gonna talk about a new thing today. <clears throat> the new Jerusalem. The old things pass away, and all things become new. That's right. We're gonna be reading out of the last of the uh, books of Revelation, or our last of the chapters of the book of Revelation, and we're going to talk about the final judgments upon the wicked and the everlasting rewards given to the righteous, and about the uh, what the new heaven and the new earth is going to kind of look like. Yeah, that's another thing, excuse me, that's another thing we need here, as a real in-depth study of the book of Revelation. Yeah, we're going to do that. Quick overview this morning of it. Uh, the uh, a quick overview would be, you know, uh, in chapter one, it's about John has a, a, a 
vision of uh, Christ and his commission uh, to write the books of Revelation. And then in uh, the seven, letter, seven letters of the churches, uh, which contain the, you know, the reproof, the promise, and the condemnation, that's uh, in chapters 2 and chapters 3 of the book of Revelation. Chapters 4 and 5 to reveal the throne room, the heavenly worship, and the revelation of the lion who was a slaughtered lamb. And then in the the opening of the seven seals is found in, in chapters 6 and 7. Now the seventh seal consists of the seven trumpets and that's in chapters 8 through 11. And then we have uh, chapters 12 through 14 are a record of conflict and evil chaos. And then the last seven plagues are found in chapters 15 and 16. And then Babylon is destroyed in 17 and 18. The victory of God and his people begin in 19 and ends in 20. And then the final, the final judgment. And in 21 and 20 through 22, we're going to be talking about the new heaven and the new earth. It's like an overview of all the books of uh, chapters of Revelation. And of course, it, uh, it gets uh, a lot of details in there, but uh, that's the general. Uh, I told you last week about a... Uh, couple who had sang a song called Raise a Hallelujah. It was about a miracle in a boy's life. And, uh, it's uh, Jonathan and Melissa uh, Helzer. Or Helzer is the couple's name. And they do a lot of, you know, they do praise and worship. And they give like a testimony. Uh, the song gives a testimony uh, to a miracle that took place in a little boy's life uh, through this church. It was, uh, so if you get an you know, opportunity, you can maybe Google it or whatever and Listen to the song, it's very uh, moving. At least it is to me, anyway. Uh, you yeah, know, I think you really enjoy it. Now, if, you were, if we were to visit Jerusalem today, we would go see a lot of historic tourist sites for Judaism and Christianity. But we'd also see a lot of armed men riding around, walking around, because there's still conflict and things going on in uh, Jerusalem today that we know of. And I would imagine when you know, whoever goes there, they'll be longing for, uh, because Jerusalem means a city of peace. Because there's, there's not really a whole lot of peace there. So I would imagine, I mean, there is in some parts, some parts there's not, but uh, you know, whoever's there and sees all that stuff going on, they're going to be longing for, longing for peace, like we long for peace today in our world, in our country. And they long for it there as well. Because it is called the city of peace. And uh, John wrote, uh, the books are about two decades after the Romans destroyed uh, Jerusalem and took it over more or less. Now we remember also that uh, ever since uh, David had the affair with uh, the Sheba, in 2 Samuel 12 and 10, it tells us what, what the result of that was. That the sword would never depart from the house of David. So from that time, back then, even before that, there was war going on, and even up until the day, there is still conflict and evil going on, especially because of what David done. He had no idea what he was doing in the uh, the consequences of his sin and what it cost not only him, but it cost other people as well. Just like Adam and Eve. They had no idea of the sin that they did in the Garden of Eden, the consequences of it that took place after that, and are still taking place today. There's no end to it until the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth come down. No, that would be done away with. But because of what they did in their ignorance uh, and their selfishness, it caused a great amount of conflict in everybody's life and it's still causing it today. Now, the final two chapters of Revelation 21 and 22 are probably the most vivid and most dramatic in the book of the things they talk about. How they uh, it can be uh, somewhat hard, so to speak. So let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Now, a lot of things, oh, and I say a lot of things, but some of the things that John writes, we don't uh, fully understand. And, uh, for example, in Revelation 20, 11, John, uh, somebody read, somebody turn to uh, chapter 20 and read verse 11. Well, Revelation, okay, go ahead. Then I saw a great white thorn, and him who was seated on it, the earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. 
Right now. Does, it, does anybody understand that? Well, I don't understand it myself, but you know, we got a uh, heaven and earth are fleeing from God. Now, God created the earth, and we know sin is on the earth. God created heaven. But now, in this case here, heaven and earth are fleeing or running away from God, and they have no place to go. I don't quite comprehend, comprehend all that, and some other things that. Uh, at least myself, I don't understand anyway, but uh, we will learn one day. But anyway, in chapter 21, I'm going to read uh, 1 through 5. Revelation 21, I'm going to read 1 through 5. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall I be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. <clears throat> now, the, uh, I said, we can't always understand everything that he's saying, but you notice that. Uh, the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, so they fled from God because they had no place to go. They couldn't stand the judgment that God was bringing down on them. So where they went to, uh, they just diminished, uh, passed away, or but, but they're gone. And John seen the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, like for a, a bride prepared for her husband. And notice that he said that there was uh, no more sea. Now, you think that the earth is 70% water. Now, if all the seas are gone, how much more land mass will we have? And how many more people will be, uh, how much more room will be available for more people to be, or more places to be? There's a lot, a lot of water on this earth, a lot of water on this earth. And all that water is gone, except for the one river, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. All the seas are gone. So all that sea that was water is now is land, and it can be... Uh, Habitated by the people that are coming with, uh, with Christ to inhabit the earth. The new Jerusalem and the new earth is going to be different. Uh, all things are going to be new. Life as we know it today will be no more. There will be no sin entering into the new Jerusalem or the new city or the new earth. they would be uh, sin free. No more locks, no more weapons, no more hate, no more evil, no more chaos. It's going to be all sweet and good. And it says, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more pain. Now, personally, myself, uh, I really look forward to the no more pain, especially. And I imagine a lot of other people do who are, they have problems in their body, uh, where they hurt uh, day in and day out. And uh, they have trouble moving around, trouble sleeping, or whatever it may be. The time's going to be when all that will be gone. And we'll be like uh, we felt when we were uh, youngsters, uh, just full of energy, full of life. No pain, no sorrow, just happy all the time. We'll have a new body. A new body, that's right. Amen. We'll have a heavenly body. We'll be like Jesus. It will be, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be grand. It's uh, something I look forward to myself. Now we know in the Old Testament, where uh, first there was a tabernacle, and God dwelt in the tabernacle. Then later on there was a temple where God dwelt in the temple, and that's how He. Commune with man, so to speak. Well, we knew in, in the New Jerusalem, and even now, they're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But at this time, he says that God Himself will be with them. In the New Jerusalem, God Himself will be there. There will be no need for a tabernacle or a tent, a church building, or whatever it may be, because it'll all be right there uh, on the earth in the New Jerusalem. <coughs> so. Uh, can I say something? Yep. Uh, when I was going to the Faith Temple Church, I was uh, I was uh, youth director over there, and we 
had our youth services on Sunday night at, in the sanctuary. And as people came to church, of course, they, I'm talking about the older people, they would join in what we were doing. And we were always doing something. Anyway, the question was asked, I forgot what the subject was, but it was along the same line. And the question was asked by a young person, well, where is heaven? Where does God live? And that particular night we had a guest speaker, and the guest speaker spoke up and said, beyond the North Star and beyond the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. The Bible refers to it as the third heaven. Am I right, brother? Yeah, and half of us are third heaven away. <laughs> it's a long ways away. Yeah, we ain't got a clue. We can't see that far. Yeah, we did see something. It's a mighty, mighty strong uh, telescope to <laughs> see that far away. You get in contact with maybe E.T. or somebody, maybe they could help us get that far. <laughs> Way, way on out there. Anyway, new, new heaven and a new earth. I had a little uh, printout. Uh, it's called Moving to the New. It talks about the new heaven and the new earth, how God is going to change things completely. And it gives us a couple of uh, uh, suggestions that we can talk about. Is one is, you know, things, things change in our lives today. When we go from being the old creature to the new creature, a lot of things change in our life, our heart, our mind, our thought pattern, our lifestyle. And they give us an example of uh, Peter. Can somebody give me an example of Peter's old lifestyle and Peter's new lifestyle, how things change in his life once Christ got a hold of him? He persecuted Christians. Are you talking about Paul? That's oh, Paul. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah. but yet, uh, Paul is on the list also, and Paul is the... Uh, Peter was a fisherman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Can, can you deny... He's on an earth time. Yep. Yeah. He got filled with the Holy Spirit. He, he, he said to Peter. Because they didn't know the gospel yet. It hadn't been revealed. Oh, you know, also, to them. I mean, Peter also had a big mouth. Yes. Yep. He cut off the ear. He was violent, too, when he wanted to be. He went ahead yeah. when they came for Christ. He cut the ear off. All of that. You know? All of that. No, no. High feet. Mm -hmm. Before he was sanctified and filled with the That's Lord. right, because at that time they still didn't That's have right. the gospel till God, you know, Jesus overcame death mm -hmm. on the cross. Yeah, all the stuff he did on there, they still didn't realize. Yeah. Really. Even who, when he came back, you know, and appeared and came, to, they still couldn't believe hardly that he was back from the dead because they saw him die. So and and Peter was crucified him. upside down. Yeah. I like to just upside down. Yeah, it's good to show how, how slow we can be, uh, uh, slow to learn, so to speak. And all this time they're walking with Jesus and he's teaching them and telling them they, they don't get it. They don't get mm -hmm. it. Know, that is just like uh, Ellis said, one in here and one ear and out the other. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it didn't stick. They thought just crossed my mind that the scripture tells us that heaven and earth will pass away. Yes. But the word will not. That's right. The word always in the beginning. This particular and the end. Bible, one day, might find itself on a trash heap somewhere. But the word is still the word, and it will not die. Yeah, that's what I've got. And the Psalm tells us to uh, hide. Uh, they said, hide the, word, "Hide the word in his heart." So that even if I lose this, and I can't stand up here and read it like I do in the mornings or in the afternoons or evenings, whatever, it's in here. Yep. And it's in here so I can recall and the Holy Ghost will, will reveal, will bring back to my memory John 3.16 or uh, Psalms 48 or Revelation 22. It'll come back in my mind what it says and what it means. And, uh, and when, I can hang on to it. Uh, uh, I've been drawn in 18 and verse 10. Then, so I've been drawn in 18 and verse 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
sin, he said unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the hand, the top with my friend, and it is given me. John 18. John 18. Oh, John. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I don't think it. Man, that is bad from, from Peter. I have somebody to read uh, 21, 6 through 10. I will. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all the things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Wow. And wow. One to ten, yeah. too, right? Mm -hmm. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. <laughs> Can you imagine mm. seeing that? That would just be... I know. Mind boggling. And the word, and then where it says in verse 8 that the fearful and the um, whatever, unbelieving and the um, abominable and murderers and whoremongers and uh, sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Man. Man. Must be honest. <laughs> Amen. All liars. And we all do it, we whether we want it. to it or not. But our sins are covered right now. But we still have to make confession. Search my heart. You know, it's every night. Be any wicked way exactly, in because a lot of times we'll do things and we forget them. You That's know, right. but he can see it. But as long as we ask him to search it out, he will and bring it to mind. I, that has happened to me a lot of times. Something will come to mind. Oh my gosh, I, I forgot that I've done that or whatever. You, you know, uh, and you, you rebuked right then. That's the Holy Spirit, you know. So, um, you know. And, and, then, and then we're guilty. I, I would say that maybe all of us are probably guilty of repeating behind somebody else. And, and on and on and on it goes. Yeah, yeah. Spirit, all these things it talks about the idolaters, the liars. We they don't just come out of us like it used to. Like some people, they you know they, they do it all day long and think nothing of it. No remorse, no repentance. 
no guilt, no shame, no anything. But believers, we have that conscience, the Holy Ghost conscience. Mm -hmm. When we sin, we do things that we know we should not do. It bothers us. And we get convicted of it. And we turn to the Lord in repentance. Yeah. And uh, ask Him to help us not do it again. Have to turn from our wicked ways. That's right. Amen. Look at fires. Uh... Now, the... some of y'all probably have imagined what heaven will look like. The streets of gold, crystal sea. It also talks about the, in the chap previous chapter about the walls, walls of jasper. And then all the 12 stones that will be at the foundations of the walls. There's sapphire, emerald, uh, uh, ruby. Uh, she, uh, there's a weather. Some stones have more than one name because they're, they're kind of linked. Uh, but the thing about the 12 stones that they mention in the book of Revelation there's a difference between them and other precious stones. Now, some precious stones, when you shine, uh, they just recently found us out in the past decade, if you shine pure light through some stones, there's no color uh, to it. It's just, you know, it doesn't reflect any color, so to speak. But all 12 of the stones that are in the book of Revelation, when pure light passes through it, they reflect the colors of the rainbow. So all the uh, stones that are on the foundation of the walls of Jasper <clears throat> in uh, Revelation, when pure light, which Jesus is the pure light, and he, his light shines through that, it will reflect all the colors of the rainbow. So you can imagine all the, the beautiful colors that would be. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and our eyes right now can't see the full spectrum of the, the light or the rainbows. Yeah, just, you know, Got to think so, yeah. Things that things will be different, things will be changed, but it's going to be, uh, yeah. And you know, Paul reminds us that anything that we go through while we're here on earth, what we will gain later on far outweighs any problems, complications, difficulties you have in this life. All the troubles, the woes, the trials, the tribulations, the tests that we go through are nothing compared to what awaits us on the other side. Speaking, of, speaking along that line, I think the Bible, you said something about the 12 stones. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there uh, are 12 stories. I believe, somebody might need to correct me there, but I believe heaven is like 12 stories, and there are 12 gates, 12 doors. Yeah, the gates of pearl, I don't recall any 12 stories. But. Uh, no, there's... Thank you. Foundations. Uh, yeah. Well, foundations. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and some of that represents the twelve tribes, some the twelve disciples. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The stones are, are actually represent the twelve tribes, and yeah. then this, the pearls should represent the twelve disciples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it says, it, and the city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. So it is going to be really high. It is. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking about a cathedral ceiling. Oh, yeah. yeah. 1,500 miles square. Yeah. 12,000 furlongs. Brother, uh, Brother Rose. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's Brother Rose said had it figured out exactly how many uh, feet or miles or whatever. It looks like 1,500 yeah. square miles. Uh, <coughs> yeah. yeah. It's going to be a... Uh, mm -mm -mm. It's, uh, we haven't seen anything like it. Mm -mm. And we had the Garden Eden to begin with, and it got messed up, so now we're going to have another, so to speak, Garden of Eden. The tree of, <clears throat> and we'll find out that not only is the water of life there, but also the tree of life is there as well. Somebody read 22. We're jumping ahead here. Uh, Revelation 21, 20, verse 22 through 27. Okay. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord, Lord God Almighty, and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun, neither of moon, to shine for it, for the glory of God to enlighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are 
are saying shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth to bring their glory and honor to it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations unto it, and there shall be no wise there into it anything that the folly, neither whatsoever works of the abomination. Nations and make it alive a day which are written in the land of the book of life. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the tree, of life, the tree of life will be there. Yep. Then we'll be there. will be right in the middle of the river. Yeah, and river, like that river. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, there's no need for a temple because the uh, the Lord is a temple and he uh, dwells with us and set up a tabernacle or a temple or anything like that. And there's no darkness there. There's uh, like a, I think it's over in uh, Antarctica where there's like six months of daylight and six months of darkness. Oh. We're here to be uh, twenty four seven. Like that in Alaska too? Yeah, I've never seen the last time. Yeah, it about. gets dark there. It's not quite as as severe as the, the six month part thing. Well, it's it really far. farther you get to the, the North Pole. Yeah. 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 And same thing with the South Pole, too, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it'll be 24 7 be daylight. Uh, not the fluorescent, not LED, not incandescent, none of that stuff, but just pure light coming from the Lord. And it'll shine through all those stones and that the. Uh, just light up everything. You know, perfect weather. Uh, no thunderstorms. No floods. Uh, none of that kind of stuff. Just uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, excuse me. Where am I right here. Butt in. I didn't mean butt in. That's all right. Go ahead. Uh, and we being people, humans, now, uh, one of the best things is that there will be no tears there. No more tears. No more tears. No tears, no sorrow, no pain, mm -hmm. no heartache. Uh, no, uh, just uh, it's like a, like a dream. We won't be losing loved ones. Okay, I have a question. Okay. okay. If there isn't going to be any tears, then why does it say he will wipe away every tear from their eyes? That's one of the last things he does. After he wipes them away, there is more. No more. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Forevermore. Okie dokie, got it. Once he wipes them away, it's, uh, that's it. No more. And uh, Sister Beagle, Brother Beagle's mother, um, I heard her say, it hasn't been too many, just in recent years, about, see, her husband has already gone on. Now, these two were real altar prayer warriors. Y'all don't know them, but I do, from way back. They were prayer warriors. And, um, but anyway, Anyway, she had, she says that the Lord showed her her husband. He was an old man when he passed away, and uh, said he looked like he was about thirty-five, and he looked so good. She says, and and uh, and then I, I I like to look at it that that here we are with aches and pains, and when we get on the other side, we're gonna be young, forever young, because time will stand still. My mother told me the same thing about my father after he had passed away for a while. I said she'd seen him in a dream. You know, he looked, looked, you know, looked perfectly healthy yep. and yep. Looked, uh, looked fantastic. Yep. And, uh, see that twinkle in his eye and smile on his face, joy in his heart, and that kind of a thing. Well, now but, uh, she's up there with him. Yeah, she's up there with her husband. Yes, yes. All right, somebody read chapter 22. One through five. Once he will be up there, when they say the dead in Christ will rise, and he comes back. Oh, excuse me. How's he going to be? Because he's going to bring some saints with him. I guess. I don't know. He did him. Mm -hmm. Christ will rise first. Yep. They're in the ground. Yeah. They will rise and come up. And then we which are alive will be changed and we'll all go up together yeah. to be with the Lord. Yeah. How are they in heaven now and they're going to be in the ground when the Christ comes by? Because right now we're there in spirit right now as God.
God the Father is in spirit. And when the, we are called up together, those that are dead in Christ rise up, they'll be given a new yeah. body. Yeah. So they'll be like Christ at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And the vision that the lady had, she was able to see basically what her husband's body was going yeah. to look like. Yeah. You'd be, Not what it currently is. You'd be able to recognize your wife, relatives, Correct. friends, neighbors, mm -hmm. whoever. And if some of your family don't make it, that won't bother you. Yeah. Again. Because there will be no tears. Yeah, no sorrow. No heart. Yeah. No, no pain. more. No pain. And give them a choice and then they made it. And not only no physical pain, but no emotional pain either. Because emotional pain can sometimes be worse than physical pain. Mm -hmm. So there will be no more pain, no more sorrow. It would be just, you know, irregardless, it would just be happy, happy, happy. Happy all the time. <laughs> and it almost what? makes it on yeah. here what you want to read. One there. One there. Uh, Why don't you read it? Okay. And he showed me a pure river of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. In the midst of the streets of it, on either side of the river, was the tree of the life which bear twelve manner fruits, and yielded their, her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse but the throne of God, and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and no need for candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and my day that you're going to have, there's going to be as such as if you can stand within the presence of God and not have to worry about disintegrating or whatever, because he has given you a body that don't disintegrate. Mm -hmm. That is one that allow you to to go into his presence. Uh, incorruptible. Because you know, this, you know, <clears throat> this thing right here, uh, none of us, as long as we're wearing this, we can't stand in front of God. The flesh can't, the flesh can't take it. I mean, uh, it just... Uh, well, a prime example is Moses, whenever he received the Ten Commandments and stayed up there 40 days with God, <laughs> then he got ready to come down and because of the sin that was going on in the camp, uh, when he came down, his face was radiating so much from the reflection of God. He asked to see God first. God said, you can't look at me in real. <laughs> Not in the flesh. So he put him in a little cave or whatever. He walked by and stuck his hand up there and let him go by. And Moses looked at the backside and see the reflection. And then when Moses came down from the mountain, he had to wear a veil because the people couldn't stand to look at him because <laughs> of the light he came from his face. I mean, that's, uh... <clears throat> it, that's, sometimes it's difficult for people to understand that. I gave, I gave, I've given quite a bit of thought about um, heaven, but I don't have all the all the answers. But if, if you were to take uh, a cross, like um, the Red Cross to have on the, as a signal or whatever, mm -hmm. that would give you four gates in the north, the south, the east, and the west. God's stone would be right in the middle of it. And he, with the reflection of it from, from God's stone being in the middle, shining out in all, all the course, there'd be no shadows there. And then there's a stream of water that's coming out of the stone. Are running. But that sounds good. And then I got to thinking about it. I said, well, it's uh, 1,500 miles square. But if it's going to be 1,500 miles square, that's a plain square block. How are they going to get the four gates in there? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you got four gates this way, four gates that way, four gates here, and four gates there. So that would give it the 12 gates. So I'm going to let them look at that thing and look, imagine all kinds of things, but you can't figure it out. 
Mm -hmm. One day, one of these days, I'm gonna see how you get. That's right. <laughs> we we will see it. But yeah. are we gonna be? I, I'm confused a lot of times, brother Ben, about uh, when we get there to heaven. Are we gonna be? We'll see our loved ones. But we're not going to be like family units anymore. We're just all one big family right. with, with God. Okay. Yeah. It, won't be, it won't be husband and wife. Right, right. Okay. We'll just all be but we'll be know. Children of God. We'll know yeah, who they sure. are. yeah, we'll know who they are. Okay. So. And you'll still be, if you were close with them here, you'll still be close with them there. But, you know, Christ and everybody Think else. Think of the people there. we will see. From times past, you know, the big names, you know, that like D.L. Moody or, you know, gosh, Charles Spurgeon. Adam and Eve. Yes, Adam and Eve is going to be there. <laughs> yeah, the family <laughs> reunion. Mm -hmm. Henry VIII, though, I don't think he, well, he knows and we never know about people, what happened on there. But it's, it's just surprises. It's gonna just, yeah, surprises and wonder, I think. Somebody read uh, hmm. chapter 22, verse 12 through 15. Chapter 22, verse 12 through 15. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give uh, every man according to his work shall be, shall, yeah, shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the uh, tree of life, and may enter in the uh, in the through the gates into the city. For without without are dogs and so, uh, sorcerers. And whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and um, what, and whomever loveth, and maketh a lie. Oh, there's a lie. There it is again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> After was I supposed to okay, read? Okay, read 16 or 17 too. That's right. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you uh, these things in the churches. I am the uh, root and the offspring. Of David, and the bright and morning star, Amen. and the spirit Amen. and the bride say, "Come, and let him that heareth uh, say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whomever, who, whosoever will, let him take uh, the water of life freely." Amen. Amen. <coughs> Yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's going to be, uh... I'm going to get me some new glasses. <laughs> <laughs> it says the rewards of uh, the righteous are with him. And we know what the other is. If you're not, uh, <clears throat> if you're not the righteous, you'll be cast into the lake of fire. You won't get the tree of life because you'll get the uh, psychic death, which will be forever and ever and ever. And no, uh, no escaping. It, uh, it comes on them and, uh, that's going to be the end of it. There's no turning back. It's uh, all too late. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it also tells us in, like it uh, says in Deuteronomy about, God reminds them that He has given them a choice. He has set before them life and death. And uh, they can choose one or the other. They can choose blessing or they can choose cursing. It's entirely up to us. We have the same opportunity today. Everybody has the same opportunity today. We can choose life, which we have chosen. And for those out there who uh, have not, they have chosen death. Whether they realize it or not, the day will come when they'll realize they have made the wrong decision, lived the wrong way, believed in the wrong thing. It's going to be too late for them. And they'll be uh, cast into the lake of fire. There's some stern, stern warnings here for anybody that tries to add to or take away from them. Well, yeah. Right. Yes. Read it. Right. Huh? Go ahead and read it. All right. 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in these book in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away 
his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs> so he the warning. Yeah, it comes in uh, 16 that uh, Jesus said, I have sent mine angels. So he, he's saying that yeah. I'm telling you this. Uh, it's not anybody else. It's me, myself, telling you, what, uh, you know, what's going on right here. Uh, straight from me. But he's the uh, root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star, and he's telling John himself to write all these things down so he knows the true and faithful statements. So there's no uh, there's no debate, no gray area, <clears throat> no change, no uh, interpretation. <clears throat> they all come straight from Jesus himself, so we know it's true, we know it's real, and we know it's going to happen. And the day will come and we'll be uh, experiencing, you know, like I said, no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more grief. Uh, we'll let everybody be our brother and sister. We'll love everybody just as much as they love us. It'll be, uh, not only be a city of peace, but it'll be a city of love. More so than we've uh, ever known before. Uh, can I say something? Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in John 14, I think it says something about in my father's house that are many mansions. If it were not so, I would told them. And I go to prepare a place for you. It didn't say a mansion for you. It says a place, a place. for you. <laughs> now, Jesus is going to be at the headquarters. And you know what? I'm looking to be at the headquarters. We'll see the bride. And he ain't going to send us down the street somewhere to stay in the mansion. We're going to be up there at the big place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, that's new literature. <laughs> yes, we do. I got my job. That's right. Yes, he is. All the time. I got a pretty book instead of, instead of just being a plain black book. I got some color. Oh, wow. Oh, how about that? I like that. All right, I'm going to close out in prayer right quick. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us here to study your word, to praise you this morning, to worship you this morning, to learn of you, Lord, and learn of things to come in our future. We thank you, Father, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do in our lives. Be with us in the next service. Help us receive what I you to have us receive and help us walk out these doors a little differently than what we walked in, a little closer to you and a little closer to each other. And we're now going to thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.